It is Labor Day, and that's traditionally when we see political campaigns shift into high gear. With less, with less than five months to go before the first contest in Iowa, New Hampshire, former President Trump is maintaining a large lead in the polls, despite campaigning much less than many of the other candidates and also skipping the first debate. Uh, joining me now is Republican strategist and radio host Malik Abdul. Uh, thank you so much for, for being with us, Malik. First of all, it's interesting, the front runners here, uh, Trump and Biden, uh, they really haven't been campaigning very much. Granted, we just saw President Biden giving a speech on Labor Day, so you know he, he's on TV. But, but when it comes to Trump, you know, he hasn't, I went back and looked, he hasn't done a campaign event since mid-August. Um, he was at the uh, Iowa State Fair, August 12th, which, which seems like it's been a while. Granted, he's been busy, obviously, with all of his legal issues. But are you surprised he's not out doing more right now? Not exactly. I think we probably will see more from Donald Trump once the, the on the GOP side, once our field actually winnows down. I expect that to happen after the next debate. The RNC will have different rules for the next debate. So I'm sure a number of those from, you know, like an Asa Hutchinson or Todd Burgum, I think that's how you pronounce his, his name, but the governor of North Dakota, I believe, they probably won't make it until the second, um, second debate. But we are seeing that Donald Trump is maintaining his lead, but I, as I said, I expect that to actually change maybe towards the end of the year, because keep in mind, the Iowa caucus is coming up on January 15th. So the expectation, if passed his prologue, that Donald Trump would actually ramp that up, as you said, after Labor Day. But you're right. Right now, we're not seeing any real campaign events. But I believe that's because Donald Trump is probably waiting for the field itself to winnow down a bit. I mean, look at that, though, 54 percent right now, that latest poll, uh, Donald Trump. I mean, he, he's way up. Ron DeSantis behind him all the way down at 14 percent. Did you say you expect that lead to, to change? Is that what you think is going to change, Malik? No, so I don't expect Donald Trump's lead itself to change because depending on which poll you look at, he's between 54 and 58. The morning consult poll has Donald Trump at 58 and Donald Trump has been at 58 for, I would say, a bit over a month now. The numbers that have changed, I see, I have seen numbers go up for Vivek Ramaswamy, but no, I don't expect the numbers for Donald Trump to change much. What I do expect is that heading into the next debate, there will be a, a number or a couple of candidates who will drop out um, just because they won't be able to meet the threshold. But I expect Donald Trump, at least it seems, to maintain his very strong lead. And he has had this lead consistently over, I would say, the last probably five months. Yeah, it certainly is a strong lead. Uh, let's talk about Ron DeSantis, Malik. It's interesting. Uh, he's, you know, been dealing with the hurricane in Florida, doing a lot of media appearances. Uh, you know, the storm moved through. Uh, President Biden came to Florida over the weekend to tour the devastation, uh, and DeSantis made the decision not to meet with Biden, which seems sort of unusual. I mean, I've covered other hurricanes in Florida, and, and you know, usually the governor will, will meet with the president. You know, the president signs off on the disaster declaration. What do you think of that? Do you think that was a bad move for him not to meet with Biden? Do you think, is this all politics at play here? Yeah, so it's absolutely politics at play. And even though I support um, uh, Donald Trump and I don't support Ron DeSantis, I do think that this was a missed opportunity for Ron DeSantis because irrespective of which party or which administration is in power, when you're dealing with a natural disaster, you're not playing politics. You're actually focusing on the people of your state. And I thought that this was an opportunity for Ron DeSantis to show something that he hasn't been able to show since he's been campaigning, some sort of by partisanship. Remember, a lot of the successes that Ronald, Ron DeSantis has had is because he has a supermajority in the state of Florida, but he actually hasn't shown much as far as his being willingness, willingness, his willingness to work with the other side. I understand that he's probably thinking about what happened with Chris Christie, where Chris Christie got a lot of pushback over the Hurricane Sandy and that infamous meeting that, with Barack Obama, that handshake. But I think that when it comes to natural disasters and taking care of your home state, that you should forego, you should ignore all of the noise, all of the consultants, and do the type of PR that matters. I think that Ron DeSantis missed an opportunity, despite he did well in his response to the hurricanes themselves. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.